Welcome to kidsacademy.mobi. Hi, I'm Michael Heyman, elementary school teacher and Common Core Consultant with Kids Academy. Today, I want to talk to you about how we can make learning fractions both fun and affordable at home and in the classroom. We'll make fractions come to life for our younger students by using real life objects like food in order to learn about how we can cut whole objects into equal pieces. Because in reality, that's what fractions are, pieces of a whole, equal pieces of a whole. And that's what we'll learn in our first segment, how we can create equal pieces, fractions, out of a whole object. But first, let's remember what a fraction really is. Let's take a look at our example, one fourth. There are two numbers. I see a number up top and a number on bottom. The number up top is called the numerator and it represents the part of the whole. That means if we had a shaded box cut into four pieces, one of those pieces would be shaded in. The number on the bottom, or the denominator, represents how many pieces there are in total. So for our fraction one fourth, we know that we would have a box cut into four pieces and that one of those four pieces would be shaded in. Now, how can we turn this fraction one fourth into something a little bit more exciting? Well, let's use the fraction one eighth. And now instead of using a box and shading them in, let's talk about a pizza and how many pieces of pizza one student can eat. Now this is more relatable to them, but still this is just a graphic on a page. Let's turn our fractions into reality. Using a brownie is a great way to have students practice cutting a hole into equal parts. In this project, let's say we have eight students. The goal for the project is to cut the brownie into eight equal parts so that each student can eat their equal part of the brownie. Let's take a closer look at how we can cut this brownie into equal parts and a good strategy for that. You want to start with using a pencil and paper so that way your brownie doesn't get cut up into a bunch of messy pieces and that way at the end your students can each have a nice piece of the brownie to eat. So we want to cut our brownie into eight equal pieces, meaning each student will get one eighth of the brownie. If they don't know how to call it one eighth yet, that's okay. Just have students practice, first on pencil and paper, cutting the brownie into eight equal parts. Even if they come up with eight parts that aren't equal, this isn't a fair way to share and doesn't represent the fraction one eighth. Students will need to cut eight equal parts, and it could be in columns and rows, or in a traditional window, and cut it into eight pieces like a pizza after that. It doesn't matter as long as each of the eight pieces are exactly the same size. Once students have begun to rationalize about equal parts and holes, we can use another fun activity to help students continue to rationalize and conceptualize how big each of these fractional parts really are. Come check out our fraction bars and folding paper part of the lesson. In our paper folding activity, we'll use a colorful sentence strip to fold this paper into many pieces in order to get fractional parts. Let's take a look at an example. One fraction strip, unfolded and uncut, would represent one whole. It is one whole fraction strip. But what if we folded it in half? And then we cut it in half. How many pieces do we have now? What do we call those pieces? Well, if we call those two pieces one half each. Have students label their sentence strips and keep them in their desk or at home so that way they can keep track of them and continue to conceptualize the size of fractional parts. Now, if we took this half and fold it into half again, now how many parts are we gonna have? Well, now we'll have four equal parts and these parts are called fourths. And we have four fourths, one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, and four fourths. You can already begin to see some equivalent fractions beginning to develop. Check it out. I can see that one half is the same thing or takes up the same amount of space as two fourths. Pretty interesting. Let's see what your students begin to notice when they're cutting their fraction bars. And now we can take our fourths, all folded up nicely, and again we can fold them in half one more time and now we have eighths and we wind up with eight eighths. Remember, 
students should label and fold as neatly as they can in this paper folding activity so that way when they conceptualize fractions they know that the fractions have to be exactly the same size. So now that your students have had a little practice conceptualizing fractions with the brownie cutting activity and the paper folding activity, let's use some cards to play some games so students can have some more familiarity with fractions and their different sizes. Fraction cards are easy to find and print online for free, but you can also make them yourself. It's really easy. Just write the numerical version of the fraction on one side and the picture version of the fraction on the other side. You can use these fraction cards for a variety of games to help learning about equivalent fractions or comparing fractions or even just recognizing fractions. For your earliest learners, it's a good idea to start on the picture side first and use the number side only to help check your work. As you get more advanced, you can do the total opposite. So let's start with a card game we all know and love, War. You can ask students to compare fractions using the picture side only. So let's take a look at these two fractions. Which one's greater? Well, if you look closely, and not at my bad drawing, you can see that these fractions take up the exact same amount of space. And if you flip them over, you will learn that one half takes up the exact same amount of space as two fourths. Another way to say this is one half is equivalent to two fourths. Let's check out two other fractions. What would you call these fractions? Which fraction is bigger? Well, in these fractions, again, I see that they take up the same amount of space. I can name this fraction by looking at the total number of parts, one, two, three, four, and the total number of shaded parts, one. And we would know that this fraction is called one fourth. We can look at our other fraction and do the same thing. Count the total number of pieces, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and the total number of shaded parts, two. We'll know this fraction is called two eighths. We could then say that we know one fourth is equivalent to two eighths because they take up the same amount of space. What if we had fractions that didn't take up the same amount of space? Like these two fractions, for example. Which fraction is greater? Well, simply looking at the pictures, you can see this fraction has a shaded in part that's a lot bigger than this fraction. What would you call these two fractions? Well, this fraction should be called two-thirds because two out of the three pieces are shaded in. And we could check our work by simply flipping over our card. This fraction we would call one-sixth because we have one piece shaded in out of six in total. We could then say that two-thirds is greater than one-sixth based on our picture. One common misconception students have about fractions is when reasoning about their sizes. Students tend to think that one-fourth is greater than one-half because the number on the bottom, or the denominator of one-fourth, is greater than the denominator of one-half. The pictures on the back of the fraction cards can help fix these misconceptions. Using visuals like our pizzas or our brownies can help clear up these misconceptions. Whenever you can make learning fun and tasty, it's always a good place to start when conceptualizing about a new math concept. Thanks for watching, and remember, math can always be fun and easy and affordable, both at home and in the classroom, and whenever it can be tasty, you know you've always won. Here's my one-eighth of the brownie. See you next time. Subscribe to our channel to stay updated on new videos. Find links to our apps in the comments below.